Hello everyone, it's Roughstar here, and today I will be teaching you two ways to update out-of-date No Man's Sky mods. I originally planned on starting this series with a very basic video covering the core of modding. However, it has been requested on one of my earlier videos, and a user on our Roughstar Discord, link in the description below, asked me to update one of their favorite mods. So I figured I'd hit two birds with one stone and show you the process I used updating their requested mod. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like so others can find it as well. And if you are interested in No Man's Sky modded content, feel free to subscribe because I have a lot more content planned. Seeing your support on the videos goes a long way. Also, if you have any more questions or are interested in joining a No Man's Sky community, feel free to join the Rough Start Discord server. Now that the intro is out of the way, I will be showing you two techniques to update No Man's Sky mods. But before I do that, you will have to download AMOMS, which stands for Auto Mod Builder Updater with Mod Script Definition System. Yeah, quite a mouthful. You can find it at the following link on the Nexus. Download it and unzip it to a location on your C drive with no spaces. I put my original one in NMS Mods, but I'll put the new one in NMS Mods too. The first and ideal way to update is to check if the outdated mod has a Lua script provided. The reason this works is, from my experience, No Man's Sky doesn't normally delete parameters when updating the game. They tend to just add new ones. This means the reason your mod is likely not working is the files the mod is changing are missing the newest parameters, and recompiling it with the newest version of the game and updated AMMs will solve that problem. As you can see here on this Nexus mod page, alongside of the mod download, there is a Lua script used to create it. I am showing you this mod because even though it is up to date now, it was not when I started playing the Origins update. And this is one of the mods I updated myself, so I did not have to wait for the author. Go ahead and download the script. I'm going to quickly open it just to show you what it looks like. Don't worry about understanding the script itself. I will teach you how it works in another video. For now, I just wanted to show you what a script looks like and to inform you that if you wanted to modify the mod, you can change these values. So, for instance, if I wanted tech to stack to 99 instead of 8, all I would have to do is change this number. Of course, don't forget to save. All you need to do now is place the Lua script into the mod script folder and run the batch file build mod. This will bring up the command window and prompt you with some options. Answer the questions provided. In my case, I don't want to copy the mod over, nor do I want to check for conflictions. This batch file is running a lot of commands in the background, such as unpacking core game files, decompiling mbim files to exml files, and then using the Lua script we just saw to modify them, as well as doing it all in reverse to create your mod. But for now, you don't really need to know any of these things. After the build is complete, you can open the folder builds and you will have your updated mod ready to play with. Unfortunately, you will not always have the Lua scripts needed for outdated mods, which is the case for the mod I was requested to update. In this situation, you must decompile the mod yourself, see the changes it makes, and then manually redo those changes in the updated game file. And then finally, you must recompile the mod using the newly modified game files. This is certainly trickier than the one-step solution available when the Lua script files are available. But don't worry, I'll be showing you how to do it one step at a time. All right, now let's get down to quote modding. The first step is to decompile the mod you wish to update. This is done by copying your mod into the folder mod builder, where the file psarc.exe is contained and then renaming it to m.pack. This is just for the convenience when referencing it. The next step is to create a new folder in this directory and call it decompiled. After that, open the command window in this directory by typing cmd in the place at the top that contains the file directory and pressing enter. This will open a command window in this directory, as you can tell from the input line. From here, you're going to type in the following line, psarc.exe, extract, dash dash, input equals m.pack, dash dash to decompile, and press enter. This is going to extract the mod files into our new directory. 
navigate into the decompiled file to see the mod's contents. I happen to know that I only need two of these files to update the mod the way it was requested, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the files I don't need. Now, despite having the modded files unpacked, they are mbim files, which you can't read without decompiling. The next step is typing in the command window mbincompiler.exe space decompile, referencing the folder we created. This will go ahead and convert the mbins to a readable format exml. If you are given an error telling you that the files are too old, then you must grab an older mbin compiler from the folder extra forward slash mbin compiler old versions. Copy an older version over and then rerun the command referencing this older mbin compiler. Since there are more files, you will have to tell it the input format dash mbin and the override existing files. And note, if the exml contains content that is useless, such as unknown values, you are likely still using the wrong mbin version. mbin has a command that lets you check the actual version of each file. Now that we know what files are needed for this mod, we have to get these files from the updated game so we can recreate them. First, create a file in the mod folder and call it game files. Now, open NMS PC Banks Explorer.ini and where it says unpack path, put your current directory plus game files. For me, it's NMS mods 2 slash mod builder slash game files. Go ahead and save and close this. Now run PC Banks Explorer dash unpacker.exe in the main AMIMS folder. This program will show you all the files in No Man's Sky. What we need are the two files we want to update. We are going to go ahead and type them in the search bar. Or in my case, I'm just going to paste their names. Then add them to the list one at a time. Once we have the files we need, we then unpack them. These files have been unpacked and placed in the game files folder, like we set up in the INI file. Once again, we need to run mbin compiler to decompile them to the exml so that we are able to read them. So back we go to the command window. Run mbin compiler.exe space game files. And great, now we have the up-to-date EAMX files. Go ahead and open both the mod and the new files up. I'm using Visual Studio Code because doing this in a notepad would be a nightmare. The next part is to copy over the changes to the working version. I'm going to do that by using the compare feature in Visual Studio Code. As you can see on the right hand side, there are a lot of changes. Luckily, I can copy and paste over most of this because it's the same parameters, just with different values. As we get to the middle, we can see why this mod wasn't working. This section here was missing from our old file. I'm going to go ahead and actually do the copying and pasting for both this file and the damage file off screen to save you some time. With that complete, I'm going to replace the files in the mod with the modified up to date ones from the game. Now I'm going to delete the original mbin files. Then head back to the command window to recompile the exml to mbin using mbin compiler space decompiled. The application is smart enough to know if there is only one type of file, it will convert them to the other. Finally, all we have to do is repack the mod and we are ready to play. In order to recompile, you need to create a text file that will tell psarc.exe what files to include and what the structure of the dot pack should be. To do this, go into the folder decompiled, create a text file and name it input.txt, and just type in the file structure the way it came out when you decompiled the mod. In our case, we are going to type it up minus the parts we deleted. So first we want gc spaceshipglobals.global.mbin, enter, and the next line we put metadata forward slash reality forward slash tables forward slash damage table.mbin. Go ahead and save and close the file. For last and final steps, we will need to go back to the mod build folder and copy psarc.exe and paste it into the decompiled folder. This is because the next command will assume the mod files are in the same folder as the application. Go back to the command window and input
And there we go. Your favorite mod is updated. Just copy this into our mods folder and you are good to go. Let's hop into the game and make sure it's working. This mod makes flying much more involved by making it similar to Star Citizen, where you keep your momentum, allowing you to do some pretty intense combat. Well, perfect. I let go of the acceleration and I'm still going. If you made it to this point in the video, please like and subscribe. These types of videos take a very long time to make and seeing your appreciation really goes a long way. If you end up updating a mod or use this tutorial to make your own mod, please let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. And remember, just because you had a rough start doesn't mean you should give up.